Good morning and welcome to the online worship service of the Lighthouse Methodist Church, where we continue to receive the light, be the light, and share the light of Jesus Christ. We have seen a slow reopening in the state of Florida, and we will continue to have online services. However, Pastor Matthew and members of church leadership will be meeting this Tuesday to discuss plans and procedures in anticipation of an in-person worship in the near future. We all look forward to being together again. Please be assured we will continue streaming online services. Therefore, we hope those who are at their summer residence will continue to join us as well as anyone who feels uncomfortable with in-person gatherings. The church staff and certainly Pastor Matthew hope these services are meaningful. But please let us know if you need spiritual help during this time when we do not physically spend time together. Please continue to pay special attention to the newsletter that is emailed each week as it's filled with information regarding church news and mission outreach, as well as the progress on the office building renovation. We want to keep you as informed as possible, plus staying current on our prayer needs. If you do need to contact the church office personnel, email is the best way. However, phone calls are being forwarded to our staff. Today, I'm combining the announcements portion of the service with a reminder to ask you to continue to give your tithes and offering. The offering supports the financial obligations of the church and its many missions, and we have promised our mission partners we will not reduce our mission giving during this time of great need. So please continue with your pledges and offerings. You can give through auto pay at your bank, you can go to the church website and give online, or mail a check to the church. Thank you so much as we continue the ministry of the Lighthouse Church. That concludes the announcements and the offering portion of the service. So let's prepare for this message and song. reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. 
And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood, and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have found myself a hiding place I have found myself a secret space In the shelter of Almighty's love In the safety of the Savior's arms the hiding place I will run to the hiding place draw me ever closer to look upon your face I will run to the hiding place I have found myself
United Methodist Church on this beautiful weekend uh, here in Boca Grande, Florida. We are very privileged and honored that you've chosen to worship with us virtually this weekend, and we hope that this service has been and will be a blessing for you. It's my privilege today to be standing in our church building and looking out at the pews where so many of you have your favorite seats. It's always a sacred thing to be able to stand here in this chancel and around this altar and to think about the ways that God has blessed us all, the way that God nourishes us through the communion table, the way that God hears our prayers at these altars and answers them. I think about the fellowship that we all have with each other and the joy that we have seeing one another when we come to church and when we participate in worship and in small groups and in Bible studies. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. I love that word, Pentecost. It's got a little jazz ring to it. But today is Pentecost Sunday where we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all those that were gathered in Jerusalem the Spirit came upon them and they began to speak in other languages in a way that people, all the people that were gathered there could understand what they were saying. They could understand the gospel. And we call this the birth of the church. The birth of the church. So today, actually, we're celebrating the birthday of the church. We're celebrating the time when the Holy Spirit came and empowered those gathered in Jerusalem to go and to spread the gospel. It's a fulfillment of something that Jesus said in the Gospel of John. We read in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, these words. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now we said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, 
because Jesus was not yet glorified. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we read in, the, in Acts chapter 2, as we heard earlier, that the Spirit had come on that day of Pentecost. And it was the birth of the church. So today is actually the church's birthday. So I want to tell each of you, happy birthday. A very happy birthday to you, the church. Now, what is the church? What is the church? I want you to take a look at this picture. This is a picture that is of our church here, our local church, Lighthouse United Methodist Church here in Boca Grande. This is a beautiful picture of our church that's taken from the median on the Gilchrist side. And you can see uh, that it is, it's just a beautiful edifice that points people to God here in Boca Grande. There's been a, a church here on this property for over 100 years. And we continue that tradition on. This is what many people who are not part of a congregation call the church. And we all know that the church is not a building. As beautiful as the building is, and as wonderful as it is for us to come here, the church really isn't a building. A lot of people, since we have been not able to gather together, have asked me, you know, what's the, what's the thing that you miss the most? And to me, I miss seeing people together here in this building. And I've asked some other people, what, what is it that you miss the most? And they have said to me, I miss going to church. Well, it's easy for us to say that we love to go to church, but we are the church. We are the people that make up the church. The church is a community of persons gathered. So when we, go, when we say we're going to church, really we're going to be with the people who are the church. We're not necessarily coming to a building. The church is not a building. Well, some people look at this picture and they say, yes, this is my church. This is a beautiful church. And what this building actually stands for, it stands for people who have chosen to follow Jesus and who are evangelical in this world, spreading the love of God and spreading the love of neighbor and participating in missional activities. That's what the church really is. It's people that are that are following Jesus. Now, this building also stands for other things. It stands for a place where children are baptized into the kingdom of God. Uh, this building is also a place where persons come together before God and before congregation and they commit their lives to one another in matrimony, in marriage. Uh, this, is, this is a place where we also bury the dead and where we proclaim the promises of God for those who have gone before us, trusting that they are experiencing life everlasting. Those are some of the things that happen in this building. But those are also things that really don't need a building for them to take place. Those are sacramental type things that happen when people who follow Jesus come together. When people, the church, comes together. You might remember this from your childhood, but there's the, the hand gesture that, that says, here's the church and here's the steeple. Open the door and see all the people. Or right now it could be, here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the door and there's not any people. But the reality is that you open the door, you see all the people, and it's the people who are the church. This church is also a part of an institution that we call the United Methodist Church. And it's funny to hear people in our congregation say that uh, they are either Methodist or they're Presbyterian or they're Episcopalian or they're this or they're that. Um, but the truth of the matter is the institutions really don't matter either. The church are the people who follow Jesus. 
when the Spirit came down, it actually brought people together. It did not move them apart. Uh, someone once said, um, in a very difficult time in the history of the Christian church in this country, um, they said the best thing is just for everything to be gone. The best thing is just for everything to be, to be gone, for buildings to be gone, for programs to be gone, for mission trips to be gone, for all of these things that we call churches. It would be best if they were all gone. And then all we'd have left is Jesus and each other. Well, the reality is that the church really is just having each other and having Jesus and following his commandments. If we could whittle it down to the simplest form, we would be a gathered people who follow Jesus and his commandments to see the world change and to see the world come to him. It's funny because the church had a very interesting and difficult time through many centuries after it became an institution under Constantine, when the Christian faith became a state religion and hierarchies were made in this religion, the church suffered through many difficult centuries. You'll recall St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis was one of these people who really had a heart for God. St. Francis really wanted to see people come to know Jesus. And St. Francis felt like he was called to challenge the institution of his day. So he wrote this really kind of long treaty about how to, uh, to rebirth the church and how to get the church focused back on what really matters. And basically it just boils down to a, a sheet of paper that had a lot of Bible verses writ, written on it. I mean, St. Francis was asked to... Uh, to, to rebuild the church, to have a vision to rebuild the institution of the church. And he comes back with just words of scripture. It makes me remember from a few years ago, not, not longer after uh, Joy and I came to this local congregation, that the district of uh, a part of our institution that helps hold us accountable and helps hold me accountable. The district asked for local churches to write a church growth plan or a church growth process plan. And it seemed like, you know, just something a local business would do or something a uh, a non-religious institution might do, but, but come up with a church growth strategy, a church growth plan. And I remember that as I sat down to work on it, and some lay people sat down to work on it, uh, it just wasn't a very comfortable exercise. Because church growth depends on our relationship with God. And it depends on if we're actually following the commandments and the teachings of Jesus to go into all the world and to make disciples. And that's the heart of Lighthouse United Methodist Church is that that's what we want to do. We want to make disciples of Jesus Christ. We want to see people's lives changed. We don't want to grow an institution just for the heck of it. We want there to be meaning behind it. Well, when we got done with the church growth plan, what I love about this is we all, all of us that worked on it kind of had the same idea. And there wasn't much to it. It reminded me of St. Francis's, you know, couple of sheets of paper with Bible verses on it. And what we all discerned on our own and discovered when we came together was everything that we do as a people and as a church here is based on receiving the light of Jesus Christ, being the light of Jesus Christ, and sharing the light of Jesus Christ. And I never grow weary of saying those words. I never grow weary of talking about receiving the light, being the light, and sharing the light of Jesus Christ. Because it is the most non-institutional way to follow Jesus that's out there. And that's what we all strive to do. 
That's why our church here is not a building. As blessed as we are with this beautiful building, our church is not a building. And even though we're part of a, de a denomination, our, our calling as followers of Jesus is not into a denomination. It's to follow Jesus to Christ. It's to receive his light and to be his light and to share his light with anyone that we come in contact with. It's to share his light locally. It's to share his light around the world. It's to come alongside neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor, I'm here for you. Do you need me? I'm here for you. I can help you. It's to lift up one another when they are downtrodden. It's to help carry the weight of burdens of people who find themselves sick or in need. That's what being the church is. That's what being a lighthouse is. We don't exist to bicker over small theological innuendos. We don't exist to be the largest church in town. We don't exist uh, to be here just for ourselves. We exist so the world may know Jesus Christ and his love. There's a New Testament word that describes the church long before we had words like Catholic and Protestant and Methodist and Baptist and Presbyterian and words like Reformation. There, there's a word in the New Testament, a Greek word that I love that describes the church, what the church actually was in these early biblical times. And that word is koinonia, koinonia. And what this word means is a fellowship of persons who are like-minded. A fellowship of persons who are like-minded. So in the New Testament, the New Testament church, the koinonia was a fellowship of persons who believed that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and was the Messiah. And this koinonia, this fellowship of persons, is what spread the message of the gospel throughout the world in those early days. We here today are really a koinonia. We are a, a group of like-minded people who have experienced the grace of God. And we share that with other people. There's a place in America's Georgia that's called Koinonia Farms, and it was started by a gentleman named Clarence Jordan during last century, around the middle of the last century. And Koinonia Farms was a place where like-minded people, they would move there, they would invest there, they would pool their possessions so at the end of the day they could be a blessing to those around them. They had one mission and one mission only and that was to be the hands and feet of Jesus to be the church to the world around them this is the organization that kind of it, it helped birth it basically birthed habitat for humanity that so many of our congregation participate in Koinonia Farms a place that was a blessing for many many people and a koinonia. You know, on this birthday of the church, realizing that we are a koinonia, realizing that we are not a building, that we are not a program, that we're not necessarily a place that people just come. On this birthday celebration of who we are, I want to invite us to remember who we are. To remember that we are the people that believe in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, no matter our background. That we remember that we are the people that are his hands and feet and body in the world around us. To remember that we are a lighthouse, even though we're not meeting in person, we remain the lighthouse that God has called us to be so the world might know his love. And let us remember on this day that it's not the things that we do in our own strength.
that make us the church. But it's the things that God does through us by God's Holy Spirit that makes us the church. As we've heard in previous weeks that the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has come. And when the Holy Spirit fell that day on the day of Pentecost, people were able to hear and understand in their own native language the story of the gospel. We are recipients of that fire and that wind and that water of the Holy Spirit. And God has gifted us each with being able to communicate so other people can understand the love of God in Christ Jesus. I am looking forward very soon to being back with each of you here in this beautiful building. But moreover, I remain thrilled day in and day out that I have the privilege of being able to be the church with each of you. I pray that God will bless you on this Pentecost weekend and that together soon we will lift our hearts and voices in worship and praise to our God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for this celebration where we can be reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus, where we can be reminded that we are not a building, that we are not a property, that we're not a location, but that we are a people and that your spirit dwells within us and goes with us each and every place that we go. Fill us anew today, O oh God, with your Holy Spirit. Make us better disciples throughout this day and in the coming days. Help us know that we have had an experience with you. May your gospel and your word ever be on our lips. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
We are honored that each of you continue to trust us to pray for you, our church, the people. We join together with you in praying for your prayer requests. We invite you to continue to send them in. You can submit prayer requests on the website. You can call the church office, and we'll make sure that your requests stay current on our prayer list. As we go to the Lord in prayer, let's remember all of those that are on our hearts, those prayer requests that we may have that are unspoken that we may not share with anyone and let us know and trust that God hears us and that God will answer our prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, inspire the sons and daughters of your church for prophetic witness to your truth. And upon old and young, give clarity of vision to acknowledge your saving power in the world. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and its leaders, Almighty God, hear our prayer. May we overcome the babble of misunderstanding among nations, so all people may hear in their own language and recognize in their own culture your unifying message of salvation and love. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For planet Earth, our home, by your spirit, renew the earth, make us good stewards of its resources, and teach us to enjoy its abundance rightly. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For those in need of healing, and among those known to us who are in need of healing, O oh God, we pray for each and every name on our prayer list. Send your healing spirit upon those who are sick in body or mind. Restore them to health, and restore to them the joy of salvation. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For our neighbors and members of our community, teach us to be good neighbors as your church, to live in peace with one another, and to live in friendship with one another, sharing the joys and burdens of our daily lives. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For our youth and children, bless them, protect them from danger and help families and parents and caregivers nurture them so that they may mature in wisdom and grow in grace. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For our enemies, bless, O oh God, our enemies, and show us how we may do good to them for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for an end to racism in our nation and nations across the world. We pray that not one more life will be lost because of hatred. Send your healing peace to the peoples of this land so that when we look in the eyes of one another, we will see goodness, wholeness, and hope in you. Almighty God, hear our prayers. In your mercy, Almighty God, receive our prayers and according to your wisdom, provide all that we need through Jesus Christ and in the power of your Pentecostal Holy Spirit who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.